Monday morning out in Shalabar, very, very autumnal, very Halloween, I have to say. So I'm going to read you a spooky short story called Picket Post. So you might want to leave the light on while I'm reading it to you. Um, it's about a young couple, Roland and Dawn, who decide they want to sleep under the stars in the idyllic and picturesque new forest. Um, but Roland has a job to do first. He has to go and he works for a lawyer. He has to go and meet a prisoner at Ringwood Police Station. After that, they've got the rest of the day and the night and what could possibly go wrong. So we have the characters there for you. Roland, the messenger, trainee lawyer, and Dawn, Airy, uh, his uh, girlfriend, and they're engaged, an engaged couple. And they're going to Ringwood Police Station and then pick it post. So settle down, and I really hope you enjoy the, enjoy the story. Roland had chosen the Phantom 350S for this trip, a sleek black box off-roader. Climate control, keyless, banging on the surround sound, seats of decadent black leather. Dawn said it looked like a high-class hearse. She sat in her camouflage print jeans and khaki t-shirt and flicked her iPhone as the car cruised a silent ghost down the A31 into the slip lane to Ringwood. The police station a concrete sarcophagus hove into view and the phantom swept into the car park. Won't be a minute, said Roland, and kissed Dawn's soft lips. He stepped onto the tarmac, every inch the smart young lawyer in the sleek grey suit. Steel spectacles and buzz-cut hair with cool fade. He slipped a grey attaché case under his arm. He had a dirty job to do. It would not take long. Roland was tempted to wear gloves. Who do you want to see? Roland produced a file, and the desk sergeant read the name. He grunted and escorted Roland along a bright corridor. In here, a key turned, and the steel door swung open, flinging light onto the grey bunk bed and a thin plastic chair and simple desk. Get up. Got a visitor for you. A curly-haired young man swung his legs from the bottom bunk. He slunk towards the chair and looked up at Roland. He was clutching a white sheet of paper on which he had daubed a red crucifix. He crumpled it slowly as he stared, his bloodshot eyes full of loathing. I'm messenger, the expression altered to puzzlement. Roland messenger. Roland grinned. Sorry, I'm black. The prisoner blinked and shook his head. I'm from Nix the Thanatos, Thesitus. Need to sign these papers. Oh, right, he mumbled. He stank a sweat, probably still high on something, thought Roland. He slid the document file from the case and opened the folder on the table. You need to sign that you have seen these. You don't have to read them. Roland felt a smile twitch the corners of his mouth. Had the man noticed? He didn't care. Let this be over. He did not want to share the same air. Here, Roland flicked the document pages and jabbed a finger on the bottom line. The prisoner's pale hand hovered. Roland slipped a black fountain pen between his fingers and unsheathed the cap, revealing the platinum nib. Ink globed on the tip and a black bob, a black blob, dropped a silent bomb onto the grey desk. Sorry, he breathed. Just sign, Roland said, and guided his trembling white hand to the line, steadying his thin wrist. Here. His signature was surprisingly elegant and concluded with a flourish. Excellent. Roland flipped the folder shut and slid it into the case. They'll be in touch. The man managed a wan smile, and his eyebrows lifted beneath the mop of hair. Thanks, he whispered, but Roland was through the door heard it slam behind him, and the key turning. Freedom. Dawn was waiting by the car, her lovely face full of light. Was it okay? Horrible guy, after what he's done. Seems so normal. Easier if he'd been a monster. Your clothes are in the back. Amazing that people can kill with their normality. Roland, it's done. Let's enjoy this. Yes, yeah, sorry, thanks. He looked at her loving eyes and brown hair tresses. She smiled. Better not get changed here. 
true, but I can be rid of this. Roland hurled his suit jacket onto the back seat and pulled off his tie. That's better. How much are we going to save by not staying in the hotel? 300 quid. Wow. The sun glinted on the silver crucifix pendant that he had given Dawn as an engagement present. For the wedding pot, he grinned. They drove from the town and threaded their way through the black lanes. Pigs and sheep poked their snouts through the slits of animal trucks, waiting for the farmer's market. They ascended Crow Hill, and the verdant meadows tousled heaths as narrow glades of the new forest unfurled as a vivid carpet before them. There was a silent woodland and stream that Dawn would like. A picket post, Roland reasoned, work for the day being done, they would walk the fragrant dells and step across the tumbling streams, watch the white egrets fishing in the shallow waters and the red shanks combing the tidal mud and wet margins for worms, observe the peregrine falcons, alert and menacing on fence posts and shingle banks, and shimmering dragonflies dancing above the swirls and eddies of tiny creeks and rivulets that spun blue threads across the turfy fields. They would contemplate the quietly grazing ponies, hind hooves tilted, manes gently lifted by the summer breeze. It was this vibrant world of intimate colours and natural sounds that would be the landscape for their marriage and mission together. Roland turned the car onto a rugged stone track. The phantom bumped and swayed, stirring a dust cloud, before finally turning into a narrow glade, coming to rest under the stooping boughs of an oak tree. They could hear the softly tumbling brook deep within the tree canopy, and they were surrounded by mighty gorses, yellow-flowered, nodding and swaying with giant bell heathers of magenta and pink, humming with nectar-loving insects, while beneath their weighty flower-laden arms, green tiger and stag beetles patiently brought order to the forest floor. As Dawn laced up her walking boots, Roland buckled up his jeans and pulled a khaki shirt over his head. Equipped with phones, map and sun hats, they plunged joyfully into the forest's kaleidoscopic landscape of pastels, vivid blooms, dancing giant daisies and twittering birds. Crossing the stream on a rickety wooden bridge, they paused to photograph the rare bog orchid, slender, swaying cotton grass, myrtle flowers bursting as stars of silver, gold and sapphire, and the crimson carnivorous sundews and butterworts. Fronds of bracken parted to reveal a tumble group of rocks and flints. The stones lay, an untended grave, at the base of a sprawling yew tree, its leaf boughs spread as in grief or prayer. The moon had risen as they wandered back under the stars. They kissed on the little bridge and crept back to the phantom as the Beckstein bats fluttered and swooped through the twilight. The car looks out of place now, Roland said. Yes, said Dawn, an old VW camper is more us. Why did you choose it? Image, he shrugged, doing a job for the firm. That suit didn't suit you at all, she laughed. You were playing at being grown up. Yes, Roland yawned. Let's get some sleep. Under the stars, said Dawn. A shiver of wind shook the surrounding trees, and the moon slipped behind a sudden cloud. Best not, he said, as a salvo of raindrops plunked on the phantom's gleaming bonnet. Got sleeping bags? In the boot, said Roland. The back seat folded flat, and they were able to lay side by side in their woolly hats, like two children on their first camp. Daylight deserted the glade. Dawn had perfected the art of sleeping on her front, and she pulled a bundle of garments from her rucksack to act as a pillow. She kissed the pendant and slid it beneath the clothes. Her breathing became soft and rhythmic, and Roland knew she was sleeping while he lay staring at the car ceiling. The darkness deepened and became intense, but Roland could hear the restless stirring of the woodland forest and the swaying and nodding of ferns and giant bushes. He felt himself sliding into a sleep and imagining the footsteps of rodents and badgers and foxes. 
He pictured them scurrying and scampering among the undergrowth and brush. The moonlight re-emerged and Roland flicked awake. A pony was standing, iron grey and emotionless, its eyes dark and unseeing. The winds shuddered once more and the pony cantered into the tree line and disappeared. The gusts were strengthening. Roland could feel a soft tremor as the phantom shifted and gently rocked. Sleep, he murmured to himself, and turned on his side, closing his eyes and pulling the sleeping bag about his head. Had it been such a good idea to plan a sleep out? They had done it before, under the dizzying Pacific night sky at Urukawa Beach, where branches from Pohutukawa trees adorned the white sand like dinosaur bones. Lizards scurried up tree trunks, and dolphins soared like sea jesters from the waves. Roland smiled at the memory and dozed. He startled awake and looked at his watch. 3 a.m. Damn! He had to go outside. No choice. He struggled out of the sleeping bag and slid on his boots. He yawned before opening the door. The storm had risen and all around the car the giant fronds of bracken and gorse shook and thrashed as the winds cut through like an invading army of ghosts. In the moonlight he watched the bending and bowing of saplings and the stooping boughs of the oak tree slapped and clawed at the car windshield. Roland looked about uncertainly. The pony had scared him. He stepped carefully back into the car and sat upright behind the driver's seat, his eyes flicking across the shifting images that cavorted around him. But it was the shadowy spaces between the trees that stirred fear. Was he looking at strange forms and creatures of a dark age, a primeval Hades? The jostling of hands and arms and feet and eyes glancing or staring with gnarled fingers and limbs pointing and waving. He shook his head and tried to focus. Roland felt the eyes of another creature upon him. He pictured the ghostly apparition of a horse, its muzzle and crest brutish, eyes dark and menacing. Dawn, Dawn, Roland shouted. Quickly, love. She jolted awake and seized his arm. Roland dared not look at the rearview mirror. They heard the straining of a cable as the car rocked and shuddered in the gale. They watched as the handbrake magically lifted and disengaged and the steering wheel rotated under the control of invisible hands. The car began to move. Dawn gasped as the phantom rolled backwards. Dear God, what's happening? cried Dawn. We're not wanted, Roland. Roland leapt into the front seat and fumbled for the keys. As the woodland raged and tossed, the phantom had moved away from the oak tree into a clearing. Ahead, the moonlight illuminated the dancing madness of the forest. But before their eyes, a blackness emerged from its centre. A heart of darkness was stalking towards them, its blank and cold eyes fixed. Roland had seen those eyes before. There is something here, he breathed. And it hates us. He turned the ignition and the car roared into life, headlights blazing into the pitch dark. Roland wrenched the wheel to the left and the phantom shot to the end of the track. The engine died. Roland frantically tried to restart the car. They could feel the Stygian gloom swarming and enveloping the space about them. Dawn screamed, get us out, Roland. The phantom roared into life and the car leapt and hurtled along the rugged track in the chaotic, howling moonlight before meeting the road. And they drove, drove like the wind, eventually meeting the comforting illumination of the motorway and the service station. They held each other, shaking, sitting at the cherry red table in the Costa Cafe, sipping lattes and loving the anonymity and soullessness of the place. It was when they walked back to the phantom that they saw it. A blood-red crucifix daubed on the tailgate, crimson runnels dripping down to the fender. 
Roland and Dawn stood quivering in the chill lamplight. They'd reached home before sunrise. Dawn lit the log fire. As the sticks hissed and flamed, they held each other in the glow. What did it all mean? said Roland. It was a warning to both of us. We did not care enough. Perhaps you did not care enough about that man. The one at the police station. She nodded. A warning, like no other, to be us. Don't surround ourselves with beauty and then think that we are in paradise. Her voice tremored. Not to think we can do what the hell we like. Roland nodded slowly. They stared into the flames. Next day, Roland took the car back to the rental company. I apologize. It was easier to do that than try to explain. I had to pay for the damage, of course. How much? Dawn shivered and looked down. Roland smiled painfully. You know how much, Dawn. She turned her face away. Everything had altered. Sometimes in a dream, Roland would still see them before his helpless sight. A grey army of phantoms, lost souls, the unregarded, the barbarian, the unloved, the forsaken, the shamed and brazen, the ragged, running riot like an insane militia among the oaks, slender birches and ancient yews. He would keep this vision to himself. It was too dangerous to set it free. I hope you enjoyed that. Scared myself. It's worth looking up, perhaps Googling, uh, what information you can find about Figure Post. Um, just an interesting, spooky, creepy place. Have I been there or have we been there? Yes. And it's an experience that we were never going to go and forget. If you want to practice writing stories yourself, go to the visitthedreamfactory.com website and click on resources and you'll see loads and loads of stuff on actually how to create a story of your own. Write, write your own story. If you want to give me any feedback on the story that you just heard, then do email me. Hope you enjoyed it once again. See you soon. Thank you very much. <laughs>